Hi, I'm Dan with Pitsco for sciencespeed.com. Today we're going to talk about the CO2 dragster activity and particularly what do you need to do this activity regarding tools, equipment, and knowledge. Uh, just a general overview and again I'm here with Ray who is a curriculum writer at Pitsco and taught the dragster activity in his classroom for a number of years. Yes. So he is an expert in this area. Um, Ray, I'd say we need to talk about the different design phases and what do you need for each one of those phases. Those would be design, building, and racing. Okay. So for, for designing, uh, the students are going to have to come up with some ideas. So they're going to go through the process of creating some thumbnail sketches and some rough sketches. And uh, they'll use some drafting skills to create a uh, full-size drawing of their of their car that they want to make and uh, so they're going to pick up some drafting skills there's going to be some uh, a little geometry and a little math if they're going to be able to, to get those things in a little artwork so that they're going to get their skills of that and uh, then once the, de the, the design phase is finished then you're going to move into uh, the building process and we have lots of options for the building process, depending upon uh, the space you have available, the tools you have available to you, and your comfort level with uh, operating power tools and, and uh, being able to uh, woodwork, to be comfortable with your woodworking skills to be able to show students how to, to uh, work on the cars. So if you don't have tools, we have uh, an easy build, which is a laser cut uh, product. We can snap these parts out and uh, some additional parts over here. And uh, then we can assemble the CO2 car race, uh, CO2 uh, racer. And in this situation, you're going to focus a lot more on uh, the science aspects of, uh, of building the car, of working on the car and a lot less on the woodworking skills. These are pretty simple. It takes uh, uh, some glue and uh, maybe a hot glue gun or something to, to work on those and build those. And those are a, a pretty reliable, tough built car. They'll, they'll stand up to lots of racing. Now, if you have uh, a few more tools, uh, coping saws and some files and some rasp, and you don't mind having a little sawdust in round in your room, you can get uh, pre-cut designs and we have I believe three or four different designs of these cars that are, are cut out with the rough to the rough shape and uh, these things will break off of this backing and uh, then you can take a file or a rasp and shape those down you can use a coping saw to trim them down a little bit if you have that space and then you can sand those down uh, you do have to have a little space uh, that you don't mind a little sawdust in the floor because students are going to make a little bit of a mess with that, uh, just the nature of the, of the process. And if you have uh, access to band saws and drill presses and you have a, a comfort level to work with those and, and teach the kids to safely work with those, you can start out with a uh, tapered block of wood. You can cut out your uh, rough design and then smooth it out and uh, come up with a car, uh, the, the full-blown racing thing. Okay, Ray, let's talk a little bit about the equipment that you need to actually run a race. Okay, uh, we have some options that we, that we have for racing. One thing you're going to need is, is a, a good size space. Uh, I typically uh, went to the gymnasium, talked to the elementary PE teacher, and uh, got permission to come down and use her facility for a day. And I would take cars down there and race them, which... Uh, I would see students later on, elementary students would be asking me when they could build a CO2 car. But the, for the racetrack, uh, we can start out with a simple mechanical uh, device like this that uh, allows you to put the cartridge in and put this car in a, in a firing pin mechanism and then you mechanically start it. And there is a uh, monofilament fishing line that is run through the screw eyes and you'll have to stretch that so that it's good and tight. You don't want those cars wandering around as they go down the track. You want a nice uh, straight line, so you, you stretch that string a little bit. And at the finish line, you can have uh, a couple of students down to serve as judges, and they can indicate which car goes first, 
or we have a electronic uh, mechanism that a, a winning lane indicator that uh, you can set up at the finish line and it, it will flash some lights that shows which one is the winner or we have uh, an electronic setup that uh, is used and there are electronic firing pins and that starts a timing mechanism and at the finish line you have a clock that, that uh, records down to a thousandth of a second. And you can race these on a floor, just as so long as it's a nice smooth floor like a gym floor. Or we have an elevated track, which is much easier on the instructor's knees. Uh, they're standing up and it's at uh, kind of table height and you can race the cars on that and put the electronic system on there and you can stage multiple races uh, at, at the start, at the finish line. You'll need uh, some way to stop the cars, to protect the cars. We generally use some cloth or a towel of some type so that when the cars go through there, they, uh, the towel slows them down and stops them so they don't damage cars. Okay, so talk a little bit about, you, you mentioned staging cars, so you would actually thread We'd actually, multiple we, pairs of cars on the line at the yes, same time? Yes, there's a, on, the, on the elevated track, uh, I think that track's around 80 feet long, and so there's some space at the end and you can, you can pair up the cars, you can match them up. Uh, if you run them all for time, one time, you can match them up by time and make it very competitive. Or you can match them up by uh, the weight of the car. Or you can just randomly match them up uh, and set them up and, and set those two cars up so that it's pick up the gate, pull two cars forward, set the gate back down, load the cartridge up, put them in the firing pins, and uh, as soon as everybody's ready, fire the cars and race. Uh, and, then, and that saves you a little bit of time when you've, when you've got several cars to race during the class period and you're trying to beat a 45 minute class period and get those in, you can, uh, you can get your cars done quicker that way. So how do you organize a race? Do you have a bracket? We, used, uh, we use a bracket. Uh, when we raced cars, we, uh, we set up a double elimination bracket so that if you happen to get up against the car that was extremely fast and you lost out the first round, you weren't totally out of the race. And uh, we separated the cars out uh, by time. We put them in a bracket, and uh, we, we generally raced those uh, until we had a winner. And uh, consolation, you get beat once, you go into a consolation bracket, you have to get, get beat twice to get eliminated. So you'll need a few helpers. Uh, I used to use students from the class. Uh, they would help me, uh, they would record winners on the bracket. They would help me sort cars so that uh, we had the cars all lined up on the side of the way they were going to go. And uh, we staged them, you know, as far as the time we get them staged in there, we'd run all the cars and we'd separate the cars that won from the cars that lost. And, uh, and then we'd put them back in the next time we staged them, we'd use our bracket and restage them and race the cars. That concludes our video for today. We hope you found this helpful. Um, please check out our website, scienceofspeed.com. Thank you.